There are a few mistakes I see new parents doing which makes helping your newborn fall asleep and stay asleep so much more difficult than it needs to be. These parents often don't know they're making a mistake. In fact, they're following advice that has been given to them by their parents or their friends, which is actually based on myths or old wives tales and are definitely not helping. Once the parent knows what these mistakes are and stops doing them, their baby's sleep changes overnight. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what are the common newborn sleep mistakes I see parents making, and most importantly, what you can do to ensure that you don't make these mistakes. But before we cover that, make sure you click on the free PDF document in the description box below, which covers the developmental milestones you can be expecting for your little one in their first year of life. This will give you an invaluable peace of mind as you'll know when to be expecting skills and when to be concerned. So the first mistake new parents often make is they actually miss their baby's tired signs or cues. So after being awake for a very short period of time, all newborns display tired signs. So there's early tired signs and late tired signs. The tired signs are basically losing interest in you or in toys. So they start to look into the distance. Their body movements either become really jerky or they start to become really still and quiet. They become fussy. They start yawning and rubbing their eyes and they might also start pulling at their ears or their face. Now, as soon as you see your baby's unique tired signs, you want to start putting them to bed because what you want to do at all costs is avoid an overtired baby. Now, if you miss those tired cues, your baby is going to move into the overtired phase, which means that you are going to spend hours with a crying, fussy baby who is going to be really difficult to put to sleep. Because as soon as your baby becomes overtired, their body releases the hormones cortisol and adrenaline, which are basically stimulating hormones that you use when you are in the flight or fight mode. And as you can imagine, when a baby is in that mode, so they're stressed, they are going to find it really difficult to settle down into sleep. And then when they're asleep, they are going to rouse and wake up a lot more frequently than they would if you put them to bed as soon as you see their tired signs. So make sure you watch out for those early tired signs. And when you see them, get your baby ready for bed and put them to bed. In addition to missing the tired signs, new parents are often not aware of how long a baby needs to be up between naps. And this results in them keeping the baby up way too long, which then leads to an overtired baby who is going to be really fussy and extremely difficult to soothe and put to sleep as well as stay asleep. So generally a baby who is four months of age and under will need to have a nap after being awake for 45 to 120 minutes. Now, if your baby has had a really long nap, so a few hours, they might be able to stay awake 120 minutes, but if they've only had a short nap, so like 30, 40 minutes, then they will need to go back to sleep again after being awake for 45 minutes. Now, because we know that babies under four months of age need to sleep anywhere from 45 to 120 minutes, you can start to look out for what your baby's tired signs are around this point. And as soon as you see them, you start to put them to bed. The third common sleep mistake I see parents making is keeping their baby up longer in the day so that they will have a better sleep at night. Now, parents are often told that if you limit the day naps that your baby has, they're going to sleep better at night. This isn't the case for a baby under four months of age at all. What you are doing by limiting their naps in the day is leading to having an overtired baby who is going to find it really difficult to fall asleep at nighttime and they're going to wake more regularly during the night versus if they had regular naps throughout the day. Under four months of age, babies will nap on demand and they may have up to five naps in the day. There is no such thing as a nap sleep schedule, but just let your baby rest as they need 
in the day because that will make nighttime sleeps a lot more easier and they're going to sleep for longer. Fourth mistake I often see new parents making is they make the bedroom or the sleeping environment too distracting. So they want it to be really welcoming for the baby, but as a result, it is often way too distracting for a little one and it can keep them awake. Babies are really inquisitive. They're seeing things for the very first time and they can become overstimulated. So it's not surprising that the baby mobiles, some wall arts, the night lights, some music that's playing in the room can actually distract your baby and stop them from falling asleep. What you want to do in your baby's sleep environment is ensure that the room is dark. So you want it to be dark enough that you can't actually read a book. And this will make sure that when they wake up between sleep cycles or they're trying to go to sleep with your help, that they're not going to be distracted by the things in the room, which will keep them awake. The other thing you want to ensure is that the bedroom itself is quiet. Now, I know it's ridiculous to assume that you will be able to stay quiet the whole time your baby's napping. You shouldn't do that. What you should do is look at getting a white noise machine. So that is consistent noise that is generally radio static or a waterfall. And that essentially blocks out all the noise that's happening in the house so that when your baby is asleep, they're not going to become startled by those sudden loud noises and accidentally wake themselves up. And if they do wake up between sleep cycles, they're not going to hear you out in the kitchen or the TV or you talking to another individual and think, hey, what are you doing? I want to wake up and be out there with them. So it will help to ensure that your baby will go back to sleep if they wake between sleep cycles. The fifth mistake I often see is parents going in and picking up the baby too soon. So newborns are really, really noisy sleepers. And that is because they spend most of their time in REM sleep, which is a movement filled sleep. And when they're in this sleep, they are squirming, crying out, grunting, fussing, making lots and lots of noise. The other thing is when babies are sleeping and all humans sleep, we essentially go through sleep cycles. And what happens between sleep cycles is you will wake up briefly, but if you are tired and not hungry or uncomfortable, you will go back to sleep. And that is the same with babies. So if you hear your baby screaming out <laughs> or grunting or crying, what you want to do is wait because they're either, they might be coming into a brief period of waking between sleep cycles or they're just in that REM sleep. And if you leave them, they will go back to sleep and stay asleep. But if you rush in and pick them up, you are going to wake them up. And as a result, they are going to be really cranky and fussy and it's like they want to go back to sleep again because essentially you've woken them up and they weren't ready. And the last common sleep mistake I see is parents trying to encourage their baby to have an early bedtime. Now, unfortunately, before three months of age, babies have a really late bedtime. Now, when I'm meaning late, it is late. It's around 10 or 11 o'clock at night and the bedtime is erratic. So it changes from night to night. After three months of age, you will notice that their bedtime starts to creep forward and it becomes more consistent. But before then, you're just really going to have to go with the flow and be guided by your baby on when they are ready for bed. Because if you try for that early bedtime, it's just going to frustrate you because after a short nap, your baby is going to wake up again and be ready to play before they're ready to settle in for the night. So those are the mistakes I often see new parents making with their newborn when they're trying to get them to sleep. If you want more information on sleeping tips for newborns, then check out this video. And if you want information on newborn cues, then make sure you check out this video. And I'll see you next week where I'll share more parenting tips and tricks.